Listen, there's preacher-made men, there's self-made men, and there's God-made men. There's preacher-made people, there's self-made people, there's God-made people. We want you to be God-made people. You can't come to the you can't come to Jesus unless the Father draws you. That's a God-made person. Everything about your life gets transformed by the power of God. He both does and wills of his good pleasure in those that has been willing to respond to that authority that is given, the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, listen, the atmosphere is filled with prophecy. The atmosphere is filled with the presence of the living God. You want to learn how to prophesy? This is the ripe, rich atmosphere to do so. All you got to do is lift your hands towards heaven and begin to say, Jesus. Begin to say from your heart that which only the Holy Ghost can teach you. Somebody said, I don't understand. You got to be born again before you can understand. But once you are, your heart will be taught full of this love. Fear will have no more dominion over you. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Everybody say, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. <laughs> bless the Lord who? Bless the Lord who? Bless the Lord Jesus, oh my soul. <laughs> bless the Lord who? Just want to make sure that everybody's talking to the right Lord. Bless the Lord Jesus, oh my soul. <laughs> Father's given Jesus a name that is above every name. That by his name, every knee should bow and every tongue confess. There is no other name. But by the name and through the name of Jesus Christ, everything that Father has in heaven becomes ours in earth. Everything that belongs to his power, his goodness, his glory, his life forevermore is found in one place and one authority. The name of Jesus. Favretesita. Today, by the power that is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, things that have hindered you will be broken off. I'm going to tell you how this can happen. This will happen when you begin to entrust the name of Jesus with the authority over your life. People are always giving thing, giving authority to things. Giving authority to money. Well, I can't or I can because of money. Giving authority to people in position. Well, I can't or I can't because of the person in position. Giving authority to governments. Well, we can't or we cannot because. But when Jesus' name is when Jesus' name begins to be proclaimed by somebody who's fearless. You know, you know how there's only one way to become fearless. You've got to be filled with love. Perfect love casts out all fear. That makes you fearless. Hallelujah. You don't care what people can do to the body. It doesn't matter to you. People stand there with all their threats. They, they stand there with all their accusations. They stand there with all their evil reports. You're unmoved. You're unmoved. You're fearless. <laughs> because you're wrapped up in a realm called Jesus. You're wrapped up in a realm called glory. You know who has all authority. When you stand in the place of one who has all authority, you have great boldness and confidence and assurance. Elisha had great boldness and confidence and assurance when they, come, when they came hunting his head. Mm. Because he was able to understand who really was an authority. Men think they are. They play games with themselves and they play games with the people that will come under their fear and their intimidation and their lies. What's worse is when people within the church start empowering these people as that the, they have some power. Come on, people. The Lord has made us uh, to, to rule and reign with him right now. Truly. To where that we can go make disciples out of nations. But the fear has got to go. There's too much fear dominating people's lives. Anytime I hear anybody preaching or ministering out of a, or, or talking or functioning or living out of a realm of fear like there's some kind of sinister plan going down, it just, it, 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 it aggravates me. 
I'm like, what on earth are you even saying? Don't you know who we are? Declaring all these things that so somebody supposedly has the power to do. Somebody was trying to tell me that somebody was controlling the weather. Yeah, there is. His name is Jesus Christ. <laughs> it, the living God, he controls the weather. Well, can't Satan get involved? Well, you know, he may be able to throw in every once in a while, but we just rebuke him steadfastly in the name of Jesus. Look how Jesus dealt with him. Huh? Look how Jesus dealt with the storm. Oh, mighty God. I pray today that from this time forward that you begin to give Jesus all authority in your life. You don't give finances authority in your life. Oh, no, the, and begin to predict and prognosticate based upon what you have and what you predict you can get. You predict wrong. You look into the future in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a faithless realm with doubt and unbelief. People look constantly, constantly giving, giving other things authority over their lives. Come on now. I want you to just be seated. I'm going to try to, I'm going to, try to shift over here just a minute. Because I'm about to get stirred up. <laughs> I tell you right now. I know what happens to me when I get like this. The zeal of the Lord begins, it be, it begins to stir on the side of me. And then people think I'm mad. And they say, oh, look, he's an you know, angry preacher. No, man, I'm filled with the zeal of the Lord. Uh, you could say that Jesus was angry when he made a whip, when he made a belt. No, he, was filled, he wasn't angry. Not in that sense. He was an angry preacher. He's filled with the zeal of the Lord. Father's will and purpose consumed it. You know, when my, my um, son and my daughter... When baby came at 1.3 pound, pound, pounds into this world and everybody was saying all their things, I said, just, what, I don't care what anybody says, you plaster Jesus' name all over it. You know, her being, uh, Allie being uh, schooled in the clinical sciences, having two degrees in clinical science and being a very bright girl and very respected girl in the, actually in the clinical setting that she was in, that could be challenging because you want to let your mind go over and your intellect go over and to, and to justify people's reasoning and justify people's rationale and go ahead and empower them because you think you understand. It's nonsense. I told her, I said, whatever you do, you plaster Jesus all over it. Just constantly plaster Jesus. Put Jesus everywhere. And as long as Jesus is there, their word will not be able to penetrate. Their word carries with it only a curse, not a blessing. Somebody said, well, whose word are you talking about? Everyone that is in this world. Everyone that is in this world. Every form of men's understanding. Every form of, of men's knowledge. Jesus, uh, Paul told us by the, the Lord Jesus, he said, the wisdom of men is the foolishness of God. Huh. I mean, that is a powerful statement because if you think about a fool, a fool has no understanding. <laughs> and in other words, if, if God could have a point of being, uh, just saying, I'm going to check out and be just for a minute, I'm going to be a one without understanding, then that's what men's got at the height of their wisdom. Just, do people believe that? Not really. Not really. Because they've learned how to function within the realm of men's knowledge and understanding. They've learned how to function in that realm. And because they've learned how to function in that realm and there's been a reward and there's been gain, you know what? The illusion really worked well. The deception really worked well. However, we step over into the reality of the truth that only is found in Christ Jesus. And we discover a whole other realm, a whole other activity of the way things, that, way things work. You know, one of the things that I continually find myself doing is trying to release people from the words that men have prophesied over them. You know, I, you know, it's like somebody comes to you and they say, well, I feel I've got an ailment. I say, what did the doctor say? And then they tell me what the doctor say. And I say, I bind that in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind that as much as I bind a devil or a demon spirit. Works in much the same way. The curses. Oh, we think that you may have cancer. Oh, we believe the cancer is coming back. Oh, you may have diabetes. We think that, you know what, depending on when you test somebody, they may have diabetes. Because it's fluctuating sugar levels. They just so happen to take a little sample and somebody got ahead of themselves. And then what if they were right? What if they did see something? So what? So what? So what? So what? So what? 
So, so for most people, it's, it's, it's rather, what are you saying? So what? What do you mean? These guys know. They didn't know. Who knows? No, no, yeah, who knows? The Word of God is very clearly declared to us. Who knows? He said to us that He was our Savior and He was our healer. He said to us He would provide for us whatever we have need of. He would provide for us out of the realms of His riches and glory. And the, somebody said, well, I prayed. Nothing happened. Well, why don't you understand how to take the shield of faith when you pray then? Because I think that most of God's people have somehow lost the shield. They don't know where it's at. It's rare to find a, one of God's people to have a shield. Because they, they, are, they have no shield. They believe. They read the word. Oh, this is what God said. He's the healer. He's the savior. And then as soon as something comes, they take an out by it. Obvious what? They had no shield. Had they had a shield, they would have been able to take the fiery... The, those fiery words of the wicked one. <laughs> those fiery darts that are constantly bringing into question, hath God not said? Constantly bringing into question whether Jesus is the healer. Constant, constantly bringing into question just how much we've been redeemed, just how much we really belong to God. Satan wants to claim some part of you. Satan wants to claim some percentage of you. And then what I watch is men and their ignorance, ignorant of the Word of God, allow Satan to claim some part of them. And I encourage you, come on over here into the realm of God, where Satan has no part in you, where he has no claim upon you. He doesn't own your soul. He don't own your little finger. He don't own your toenail. He don't know nothing about you. Where is the faith? That prayer gives Christ Jesus all power, all authority, all dominion. Where is that faith that was once delivered unto the saints? Where is that faith that has boldness and authority to cast out devils, much more crush sin and its temptation? Where is that persuasion? Where is that consecration to be stirred up with his righteous cause? To be stirred up with his holy indignation? Take a hold of divine power and authority now to, 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 to rule and reign with him in that position that he's given unto us. You can have whatever little toys of darkness that you want to play with. I'd rather have the riches and the treasures and the glory that lasts forever. This place and position that Christ Jesus with his word of authority has given Somebody said, well, I thought all you had to do was believe and you'd be saved. There are many who believed. But Scripture says Jesus did not trust him, entrust himself to them. There were many that would believe, but they did not confess him because of the Pharisees had threatened that if anyone would speak his name openly, they would be cast out of the temple. The devils believe. I can go down a list. I keep going. The devils believe. They tremble. <laughs> there's, a, there's another realm in which we live where we make Christ Jesus ruler, king, master, God. Where what he said is absolute and sovereign. It settles every debate. settles every issue. I find myself, you know, at, at times looking to try to give certain men, certain people, certain denominations as much honor as I can and because I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm so overwhelmed by their empowerment of systems, of societies, of social structure, of culture, of realms of physical ailment and spiritual dysfunction. No. I tell you, people, I pray in Jesus' name, you'll empower Christ Jesus to be who he is. You'll empower him. One day I was, you know, I, I think that the Lord struck me so intensely with this, probably more than ever in my life, uh, uh, with the verse of Scripture that I've heard all my life. As long as I can remember learning anything or hearing anything, I have heard this. I have heard all my life. All authority is given unto me, Jesus says, in heaven and in earth. I've heard the over it again, but as I stood there on the 47th floor of one of the largest buildings 
in Tokyo, Japan, saying, Lord, this is the biggest city on the earth. I'm standing in one of the tall, I'm standing here in one of the tallest buildings that men have ever erected, and you look very small here. Lord, where is your power? Where is your glory? Where is the majesty of your church that gives to you and brings forth from you all that you won for us at Calvary, sealed for us? <laughs> When you gave us the Holy Ghost after having a res a resurrected from the dead with the keys of death, hell, and the grave, having ascended up on high, uh, having, having led captivity captive, having been exalted uh, by the right hand of the Father and given a name that is above every name, that every na by, that it's your name, not only in this world, with emphasis on this world, the right now. I'm afraid that too many people have great faith for the future. They have the great faith for tomorrow. But how about the living presence of Jesus? How about the now? How about the right now? How about it? How much has he got now? How much power does he have now? How much, is, how much of the truth is relevant now? Provable now? Those things, ultimately, the Lord has left. Unfortunately, he has left them within the framework of our decisions and our will. And we behave ourselves too cowardly. We behave ourselves too timidly. We're too easily led. We're too gullible. Uh, you people of God, you need to get established in the truth and not be moved. Uh, you need to learn how to take hold of the faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. And having done all, stand, stand. It's, t it's time that there's just not these bunch of little tender plants. This sprung up overnight in the house of God. No sooner does the sun rise and they wilt and wither under a little bit of pressure, under a little heat. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. It's time for God's people to stand up and get radical. But I hope you get radical about what you're supposed to be radical about. I hope you get radical about the truth. I hear people radical about all these crazy agendas. What are you talking about, man? What are you talking about? There's one, only one conversation to be had. And that is grabbing a hold of the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. And beginning to stand in a place where we proclaim what happened. What God announced there when Christ Jesus was crucified. What God announced there. Hallelujah. When he said, first and foremost, this is my only begotten son in whom I will please to hear ye him. What God announced when Jesus was crucified. What God announced when he raised Jesus from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Forget everything else. Forget all the announcements of everything else. It's nonsense. It's, it's ludicrous. People's hearts being turned to fear rather than to faith. I'm not letting anybody turn my heart to fear. Somebody starts telling me all these fearful reports. They go, so what? So what? So what, what does that mean? Huh? <laughs> So, so, so what if it is? What are we going to do? So tell me what the plan is. Huh? Just to tell me what the solution is. I'm not interested in your problem. You look, I know where the world's going. I read the book of Revelation. <laughs> Give me a break. It has no bearing on the reality of where we're at and what we're supposed to be doing. Huh? You know, I, I hate it when people get captivated by Satan, captivated by the satanic, Captivate about what the devil's doing, whether he's doing it personally or doing it through some government or doing it through some society. <laughs> so doing it through some group. Give me a break. Jesus help us. People act like money so powerful. I mean, here's so many people talking about the Federal Reserve System. I mean, it's like whoopie doo, man. Who even cares? Who even cares? Why should you even care as a person full of the Holy Ghost and full of faith? What does it even matter whether the IRS comes and gets a little bit of money from you? Big deal. What, God going to be bankrupt over the fact you got to give them 15% of whatever? No, he's not going to be bankrupt. Come on. I mean, all this nonsense, all this foolish talking, all this foolish jesting. It's time to rise up, get in bold, understand, get 
full of boldness in the faith and understand that God has given us power and authority to make disciples out of nations. In other words, to be in charge. I don't care what the Congress or Senate says about what or the Supreme Court says about the position of the church and government. I understand what God said about the church and government. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm not changing. It's his story. He's sticking with it. And so am I. Amen. Amen. What are you going to do? What, what, where are you going? What is, what is it in your life that you're going to entrust with authority over you? What are you going to, what are you, what are you going to give power to so that it can make you feel one way or the other? Oh, I pray in Jesus' name, you get Jesus on your lips and he doesn't get off. Hallelujah. <laughs> I pray in the name of Jesus, you become sold out to Jesus Christ and you know no other and give power to no other and desire, desire to be with no other. Who else has redeemed us with his blood? Give no authority, give no place to Satan in your life. Give no authority to, to the powers of darkness in your life. You want Christ Jesus one day to claim you as completely his. Yes. You, need to complain, you need to proclaim him as completely yours. Yes. That you belong to him, spirit, soul, and body. I tell you right now, I don't care what anybody says. God told me I belong to him, spirit, soul, and body. And everybody else can just forget their report. <laughs> Go spit it on somebody that might listen to you because I'm not gullible. I've been sold out to one opinion and I'm not changing you know, the word we use for heresy actually in Attic Greek is translated opinion. I'm of one opinion. That is the opinion which God gave in his word. Hallelujah. For which you can have two or three witnesses upon that op God's opinion and that's it. And it has to be cut by context and it cannot cause there to be any other contradictions in the word. By those three laws. Of understanding and I'm not gonna hear no other opinion God said I am so I am he said I made he said I won't be sick so I'm not gonna be hallelujah he hallelujah God said even command ye me that's a pretty radical one when's the last time you heard somebody preach on command ye me saith God you have to go back a hundred years and start back and go you know retro from there to hear that because now all we're concerned about is how much money jingle jingle in our pocket how much wealth what is this come on we live in a society that is bent on lust we live in a we live in a carnality of this world that is all about possession all about property all about ownership all about having something and having more of it and an insatiable lust for it and there is the basis by which we compare people and and the basis by which we honor or dishonor approve or disapprove it's the wrong culture did somebody said you think that the western world is the culture of kingdom of god as i said it's not not any closer than than, than that one that's in the congo it's not any closer <laughs> to that one that's in Iri and Jaya. It's not any closer. Uh, the kingdom of God is absolutely separate and different from everything and every model that you have in this world. Hallelujah. And now it's time to begin to learn. Begin to give yourself over to these things so God, you can be taught of God. Somebody said, I want to be taught of God, then you're going to have to dwell in them because otherwise you're not going to be taught of them. You're going to, uh, you're going to be influenced a little bit, but... You know, there's a greater influence in this world. If you're going to be in the world, in this world, there is a greater influence if you're in the context of this world. And Satan is a, a master at his craft and deception. But if you're in Christ Jesus and he's in you, then greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. And you have nothing to worry about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I know some of you just, some of you are starting to cross the finish line on reading the Bible in 90 days, so you've made it before 90 days. How many of you done? How many people are done? <laughs> Praise God. Start over. Start somewhere else. I don't care how you start it, just do it systematically. My, I would encourage you to start back to Genesis 1-1. Hallelujah. How many of you, you feel you're on track, you're there, you're where you're supposed to be? Well, I praise God for that. Bless you for being obedient. Okay, I, and, and those of you who aren't on track, well, I, you know what? I, I pray in the name of Jesus, you start prioritizing God. And, well, I would say better, 
deprioritize God. Stop prioritizing him. Make him first and make, then prioritize everything else. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. I want to just challenge folks to find out just really how much time the Lord has in their life. And for me, I really truly believe, because I've watched a lot of preachers go preaching and they really lost their relationship with the Lord Jesus. They're busy about doing things that look like, turn this up so I can control the volume the way I want to. That, that they look like they're doing something in the kingdom of God, but really they lost their personal relationship. So for me, um, understanding how much time you're giving to the Lord in your life is about your personal relationship with Him. How much you're seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness is fundamentally about your interaction with Him. And then that becomes the basis, that becomes the means by which everything else that goes on in your life, it, it is an overflow out of that. It's a, it's, it's a strong unction out of that. I mean, I love seeing Jesus ministering with great signs and wonders like has never been seen. And yet he said it's supposed to be seen greater. So some of us are going to have to go ahead and give ourselves to the greater. Because there in that great revival, not only were 5,000 men fed off of just a few loaves and a few fishes, but also children and women as well. I mean, at minimum, you know, goodness gracious, that's 15, 20,000 people minimum. It was, I'm sure it was more than that. They had big families back in the, those days, and there's lots of reasons why. Huh? couldn't afford help you can just have children and raise up help <laughs> but that's another subject and the scripture says everybody that came to them was sick diseased maimed that means people got their missing arm or missing a nose from leprosy or ears or whatever they were completely made oh everybody got healed wow what a great three-day revival what a great three-day move of God what do we see Jesus doing going up all night and praying going up in the mountain all night and praying huh I, I the relationship that needs to be modeled in our life I want you to open up your uh, your Bibles with me to Ephesians chapter 3 and, and verse 15 thank you Lord Jesus everybody say hallelujah, hallelujah. say I am, I am. Resolved. resolved no longer, no longer. to linger Charmed by the world's delights. Things that are higher. Things that are nobler. These have allured my sights. I will hasten to him. Hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest. Lord, I come to Thee. I will hasten to You. In other words, run to You. Hasten so glad and free. It's not law, not legalism, it's not bondage. Hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, Lord, I come to Thee. Jesus, Jesus, Lord, to me, Master, Savior, Friends of peace, ruler of my heart today, Jesus, Lord, to me. Can you want to sing that again? Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Lord to me, Master, Savior, Master, Savior, Prince of Peace, 
ruler of my heart today. Oh, Jesus, Lord, to me. Hallelujah. I got a love that's greater than anything ever made before. I got a love that's greater than anything ever created. I got a love from heaven made for me by Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm singing the wrong age. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. I got a love that will never fade. Amen. A gift from the ancient of days. You get Ruthiana to sing it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just, just praise him for a little while. You know, if I'm praising the Lord, you can praise him too. You only really need to stop and listen when I'm preaching. And then if you get a shout come on you, man, I'm going to probably listen to what you got to say. Make sure I can be heard here. Yeah, I, I hate it with the end of meeting. People come to me and sit on the back row. I couldn't hurt hear a thing. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me, man. You sat and you, you were in the meeting the whole time and couldn't hear a thing. Look, you got permission to like flag me down. Stand up and go, hey, stop for just a minute. I need to hear this. And you'll get, get the utmost respect out of me. But at the end of the meeting to come and tell me that you couldn't hear a thing, I, I, please, <laughs> leave me alone. I don't even want to hear it. It's inappropriate. You can stand up and wave your arms, scream and holler during the meeting. And we want to hear it. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> I love to see people enjoying the presence of the Lord in the church, in the meeting. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Well, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15, I want you to look there with me. And I want to just encourage you here this morning about what Father God is doing in your life. And... Um, the Lord says He wants us to grow up into all things. He wants us to grow up into all things into Christ Jesus. Everything that Jesus has, Father has made available for us so that we may grow into Him in everything. Say, I'm growing in Him. I'm growing into Him. It's pretty radical, huh? Huh? It's like, I could say that it was almost... It, this is a weak allegory. But when you were born, your daddy bought you a suit. Because he, you were born and he figured you're going to be six foot four and you're going to weigh, you know, right out at 195. And so he bought you a suit. Huh? And every day you go and you're growing into that suit. Hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha 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 ha! You can you might you did this morning. You might have got the suit and you drug it out of the closet, and your your arms didn't even make it all the way to the place where the hole begins for the arm. Your arms don't even go out that far. You're still in the shoulder zone. <laughs> but it's still yours, and it's still purpose for you. And and I'm on JK, and I'm on JK, and Papa's purpose for you. I mean, the mystery of the way that this works is just absolutely so so um, was so amazing. It's so wonderful. It surpasses words. Where God is at work on the inside of us, where we find ourselves as we participate with Him. Look, think about you. Think about the. Um, turn this down a little bit now. Just quit swinging it on me, if you would, please. You, you just you think about the the Second Corinthians chapter three, verse eighteen, where we behold Him, we look at Him, we behold in a mirror. 
with an unveiled face. We, we, and and, and we, we, we can't even imagine. Wait a minute. When I'm looking in the mirror, I'm seeing me. You are? Well, then you want to get rid of that self-evaluation. You need to begin to look into the mirror of God's Word and begin to see Him, Christ, in you. You need to begin to see what He's made you. See, there's this been wonderful, myst you know, mystical thing, mysterious thing that took place. We were born of the Holy Ghost. And it's a mystery to begin with. You don't even begin to, you know, begin to even comprehend this. How that, just like the wind that blows, and it, you know, it, it goes and blows where it wills. And so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. We, we, we hear the sound of it, but we don't understand how it functions, how it operates, where it's coming from, where it's going to. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. And your Father is saying, look, just give yourself over to me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cause you to grow in grace. I want you to come into a place now. And, you know, we, we, we read here, speaking the truth in love. There, actually, the word for speaking is not the primary tr word that would be used to translate this Greek word. It's actually the primary word that is used to translate that Greek word would be living in the truth. Living in the truth. What is the, living in the truth? It's, it's embracing what he said about me. It's em embracing who he said I am. It's embracing what he said he would do for me. That he's establishing me. That he's making my way perfect. That he leadeth me. You lead. He leadeth me. My God, he leadeth me. To grab a hold of the Holy Spirit has come. To, to, to begin to, to intercede on our behalf with groanings which cannot uh, be uttered. And, he, and, he's, and he's at the point, not of our strengths. He's at the point of our weaknesses. Man, say, man says, it is fool. Here's what man says. It is foolishness to try to focus on a person's weaknesses and develop them there. Because you're not going to get profit from them. Look at their strengths and capitalize on it. God doesn't do that. He goes to the area of our weakness and he begins to intercede on our behalf. <laughs> with groanings which cannot be uttered. He is so desperately moved with the feeling of our infirmity. He's so desperately moved with the desire to see us established and have everything that we should, should possibly uh, be able to receive within the framework of his blessings. And how unlimited is that? For of his fullness have all we received. That was pretty radical, but I didn't deserve it. Guess what? The culture of, of God, the kingdom of God, the realms of God doesn't, isn't, doesn't function on what you and I deserve. It's a grace and a mercy and a gift. It's the love of God. It's his giving. He says, well, you receive the gift that I've got for you. I won't force it on you, but I'm giving you the opportunity. I know that you've been married five times. I know that you're now living in adultery with a man who is not your husband. But I've got a gift for you. And if you'll take it, it will be on the inside of you with a supply right from heaven that will change everything about your life. And fulfill everything the Father's ever desired for you to have on the inside of you. God is amazing. If I will go and I'll look in the mirror and stop self-evaluating. You know, there's many people who've been so bruised, so beaten, so hurt, so wounded, so ruined, that they don't like looking at themselves in the mirror. They don't like looking at themselves in the mirror. Because they, they see something that's too overwhelming for them. They see their hurts, their pains, their problems, their issues, the abuses, the things that people have said about them. There's other people who like just to stand in the mirror and just, <laughs> they can't get enough of themselves. I'm talking to them and there's something that's a reflection in the, in the window behind me and I see them staring at themselves more than listening to me. I'm like, you know, come on, just take, give yourself a break for a minute. You're not, you're gonna still be there when we're done here. You know, there's all sorts of folks and all different various variations from those two extremes of what we look at when we look in the mirror and we behold and we begin to self-evaluate because the mirror really is about evaluation. The mirror is really about you getting yourself uh, fixed up as best you possibly can. It's there where you notice whatever little warts coming up or whatever blemish are coming up. My wife, is, she tells me she's got a blemish. I'm going, where, baby? I cannot see it. <laughs> oh, it's right here. We're well, getting the magnifying glass out. And, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and there's, we understand the value of that. We, you know. 
to some degree. You, you can see I don't really understand the value of it very much. But we can understand the value of it. Praise God. At least I didn't come to church like looking like that. <laughs> I fixed myself up to be presentable as best I possibly can. I never liked the barber shop, never in my entire life. I don't know what happened to me. I, I got sheared when I was a little guy, and from that moment in time, it's like, you know, I cut my own hair, and you can tell. Because I just don't want anybody just doing whatever they got to say, do. please get away with me. Get away from me. So I, we all have our little strange things. <laughs> to go on. But there's a, there's a bigger issue here is, is what Father said about us, who he's made us. See, I'm more, I'm more captivated about who I am in God than who I am in me. I, I am so captivated by who he said I am, I don't really even care about who I say I am. I don't really, and if I don't care about who I say I am, I really don't care about who you say I am. Well, if somebody said, wow, that's a really an interesting position to be in. I say it's liberty. I say it's now wonderful that you don't have to live your life under the, under the yoke of somebody's opinion of you. And you gotta be self-conscious, well, did they, do they like me? Or, hey, you know, do, or do you still like me? And uh, you just get rid of it. I mean, we just grab a hold of this empowering love of God. Grab a hold of reality. Men's perceptions are always changing. People like you and love you and respect you till they get to know you. <laughs> and then they gotta go flirt with somebody else. As long as in the mind of men, you somehow are, are better than them and, and they can fit in with the betterment of themselves, you're great. But I've, I've found over and again where that's you know, so fleeting. I believe you know, one, one of the areas of, of spiritual maturity is when you discover somebody, you discover people for who they really are, which takes a while. Especially when, you, you know, you, most people are somewhere between the ages of 3 and 12 years old. <laughs> Emotionally. Sorry. I know it's tough. But we're going to look in the mirror. <laughs> you might as well get used to it. And if you can, you can accept it. I used to have a real problem with it. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> and then one day I'm like looking at some people and they turned into little children before my eyes. And I was, my heart was filled with compassion. I go, oh. I was expecting them to behave and, and cooperate and operate like fully, full, you know, fully matured people. No, 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 no. Come on now. Come on. Hold up. The, the love of God that has been poured into our hearts, the wisdom and the understanding of God that has been poured into our heart, and the maturity of God causes us ultimately to feel the same way about people no matter who they are. Once we've truly got to know them, once uh, all their frailties and all their weaknesses and all their problems are exposed to us, that's when people get up and move. Have you noticed that? Do I have a witness? Of course you notice that. As soon as somebody begins, as soon as you begin to notice somebody's frailties and weaknesses, I really like going over that. I went over there to that church. I thought it was so wonderful. And then one day I heard the preacher yelling at his wife in the parking lot. I'm out of here. Give you an example. And then that's good. That should be enough of an example to start sparking a whole bunch of remembrance in your mind about what you did somewhere at some time. Eh? Hey? Huh? You're going to discredit somebody over some issue, some problem, some weakness, some frailty. My goodness gracious. Let's just pop the bubble right now, fantasy, <laughs> and move on into the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and begin, and, and, and you know, if you really, if we, people were really, to, if, they, if you really self-evaluated and you self, were self-evaluated in the truth, you'd never want to self-evaluate anymore. I'm telling you, you'd be too overwhelmed by it. You'd say, forget about it. What did you say? <laughs> Lord, what did you say I could have? <laughs> I don't want about, I'm done with me. Yes. You mean I get to exchange this for you? Yes. And then you would run to it. You hasten unto him. You would just have his life. And you quit self-evaluating. You just say, this is who I am in Christ Jesus. God has made me this. Holy Ghost knows about my weaknesses and my frailties. Guess what he's doing? He's groaning. He's interceding. He loves me so much. God is so devoted to my perfection. He's leading me. He's guiding me. He's teaching me. He's training me. You may not like me, but God is desperately in love with me. I got a love that's greater. He's desperately in love with me. And he's so in love with me that he made me everything new. You can see all the bad you want. You can see all the frailty you want. You can see all the weakness you want. I, I'm going to take and receive what God has given me 
in Christ Jesus, and I'm only going to see Jesus. And when I'm willing to only see Jesus, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. When we look into the mirror, and it's not about self-evaluation, it's about an unveiled face. What happens in the unveiled face? That is the ability to look in to the New Testament, the New Covenant. That's the ability to look in to the removal of the law. That's the ability to look into the very face and presence of Jesus. Look at the context. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3. We look into the mirror with an unveiled face. It's not veiled anymore. There's not a veil hiding from us what God did for us when he, loved, when he gave us his only begotten son. Now we are able to see, look fully into the beauty and the splendor of the new creation. And what happens? We're changed. We're changed. And literally continually changed. Somebody said, am I continually being saved? No. You're saved and you're continually growing. Am I continually being sanctified? No. You're sanctified and you're continually growing. There's a big difference, okay? You're born one time. You're not born every day. Oh, I just got born. No, you're born once. You grow every day. You're born once so you can grow every day. God gives us the same model. Says to us, grow in this grace. What is grace? It's more than the favor of God. It's a divine provision of God so that we can have everything he wants us to have and be everything he wants us to be. He's supplying it. But we got to agree with him. It is a realm of faith. There is absolutely no moving forward with God till you get it settled in your heart who God is and who he's made you to be. And then you get out of the complaint, you get out of the murmur, you get out of the doubt, you get out of the unbelief, you get out of the cursing, you get out of the finger pointing, you get out of the realms of accusation, you get out of the realms of slander, and you're overwhelmed with His goodness and His love. And all you can say is, thank you, Lord Jesus, you're amazing living God. Now you're looking to the one who, you, who, bore, who gave you birth. You look to the one who formed you. You look at the one who made you, who created you. You look under the rock from which you were hewn, chiseled. God is amazing. He's a, he's a Zuraba. She told him, Ahaya. He's an amazing love. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, John 15, too, you know, when we look at John 15, too, John chapter 15, for me, it, ca- it, it, is, it, it captures the whole of the new birth experience from beginning to end. In John 15, too, the Lord tells us he's brought us into himself, unto himself to make us one with himself, to come and live with him, to come to choose and dwell, choose to dwell with him and abide of, with him. And, he, so he, and, and so now that we're created anew and now we're belonging to him and now we've sprung forth from him, we are as a branch in a vine. And he says to us, he says, every branch that brings, that does not, he says, every branch that bears not fruit, he takes away. But this is the more important part. Every branch that bears fruit, he purges it. So that it may bring forth more fruit. It's just this on, it's, once again, it's just another way of describing being in Him and continuing to grow and to continue to mature. To not stay as children, as we just read about. Well, we didn't read today, but if you read Ephesians chapter 4, you had just read previously in those verses that there's two places that you can go. You can either grow into the fullness of the measure, the maturity of the ministry of Jesus, into a fully mature man. That's a lot of maturing, isn't it? And the words are all volume words. They're all level words. They're, all, they're almost all, you could say they're almost measurement words in that verse of Scripture in verse 13. Or you can remain a child. Who wants to remain a child? Somebody says, what am I? Am I a child? Am I a young man or am I a father? Well, then the Lord gives us enough evidence to understand really where we're at in this mysterious growth that takes place by the power of the Holy Ghost just because we're there with Him. We find ourselves, we we awaken with His likeness. We find ourselves being empowered. We find ourselves being filled. We find ourselves being strengthened. We find ourselves going from glory to glory. We find ourselves coming into the capacity of all the fullness of that Christ Jesus has, who is the who you think about this when you think about the fullness of Christ he is the express image of the father he is the fullness of the power of God or as King James says the Godhead but it's literally power of God he's the fullness of the power of God made manifest we read what Paul said in Romans 8 and he said 
that this is what God predestinated us to do, to be conformed to the image of Christ. And when we think, wait, to conform to the image of Christ, he's the express image of the Father. And we're conformed to the image of oh, all. Being conformed, this, this maturation, this growing, this, mature, mat, this maturing in this goodness of God's grace where there is a provision where that if we fail, he, ca he causes us to, to remain as though we did not fail. So long as we are willing to remain in him, dwell in him, speak the truth or live the truth in the realms of his love. Mm, a supply from the Holy Ghost being continually filled. Paul said it like this. A powerful way he said, it, said this in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, which is another one of my uh, favorite chapters of the Bible. In fact, I don't have a not so favorite, except for I don't really like reading about Manasseh. But I'm not going to get into that right now. There are certain chapters of the Bible I don't like because I, I just get so provoked by the wickedness and rebellion of some of the people that God had entrusted with such grace and such glory, and they just threw it all away. Huh. But otherwise, Paul said, though my outward man is perishing every day. You say, look at me. Take some pictures of, look at me as some pictures, you know. You look at some pictures of you 30 years ago, and I'm going, really? Dude, look at you, man. You've gotten old. <laughs> uh, I got wrinkles coming up, man. That's why I got a beard on. <laughs> Because when I look in the mirror and I start self-evaluating <laughs> based upon what I used to look like, I don't like it. <laughs> We're making some adjustments. <laughs> but as, and, and you know, you don't want that to happen. You don't want that to happen. But what do you want to happen? You want change on the inside. Yeah. Well, look at here. Look at here. As your outward man is perishing every day, here the inward man is being renewed day by day. Every day we're going from strength to strength. It's newer. We say, what's going on? How am I growing? How am I doing? I've been measuring myself and self-evaluating. It's not like anything's happening. There's, not, there's no growth. Man, if you're giving your life over to Jesus, I'm telling you, it's going through the roof. I'm telling you, there's growth and development going on in a way that is just immeasurable within the framework of what you and I, from a personal observation, can conclude. We're just going to have to understand it in the miraculous dimensions by which Father has described it. Look at the miraculous dimensions by which He has described these things. All the fullness conformed to the image. Being filled with all, every, everything that Christ Jesus Himself possesses. Fullness of the measure, of the maturity, of the ministry. Jesus stepped in, I believe, Jesus stepped in day one in the fullness of the maturity. He expressed the fullness of the maturity of his ministry day one. He had the capacity within his obedience to God, within his submission to God, within his yieldedness to God, within, within that perfect obedience to God, to step into the fullness of the measure of maturity. Somebody says, do you have to liken it to a whole lifetime? Does it take a whole lifetime? There's nothing in the scripture that says it takes a whole lifetime to step into the fullness of the measure of the maturity of ministry, but yet religion won't even afford you to do it in a lifetime. You want me to say that again? Let me say that again. Should I say that again? Yes. Should I give you a reality shock? You ready for a jolt? Uh -huh. There's nothing in the Word of God that limits that somehow you, you have to spend a whole lifetime to step into the fullness of the measure of the maturity of the ministry of Jesus, but religion won't allow you a whole lifetime to do it in. I'm going to break off those bands. Huh? I'm going to get myself a whip and clean the place out. Huh? I'm saying, oh God, let the fire of your Holy Ghost burn in me in such a radical way. Father, raise up 
men and women in our midst who's going to be willing to be so filled with the Spirit. I'm so blessed with what's happening with Pastor Kelly right now. So many doors are opening up. Crusades, you know, in Africa just opened up. It's just one place after the next place after the next place. You know, I got a, got a testimony from him this morning about just the radical things that are going on in the meetings. I'm just believing God for thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of people to be willing to be so empowered with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and the ministry of the Spirit to quit self-evaluating. Go ahead and embrace and take those things and receive fully those things which God has given you. And quit, I mean, your culture has taught you to be performance-based on a level that no other culture can teach. From the time you're a little child, you're being graded. Most of your papers look like a piece of artwork when you hand it in after it gets, comes back from the teacher. Huh? Right? There's just been marked up so much, you know. And You know, about, you, know, you were blessed to make a C. And then you're always just trying, trying harder, trying to please. Everything's become about pleasing people and pleasing men and achieving a goal and fitting in. I'm the slow learner. I'm the guy, the guy that, you know, whatever. People, it doesn't even exist in God. It doesn't even exist in God. He doesn't impose that on you. And yet, what happens is people impose it upon themselves. And, and I know when people impose it on themselves because then they're imposing it on everybody around them. So you give what you got. It's about time you start giving people love, whether they deserve it or not. Huh? Mercy, whether they deserve it or not. Grace, whether they deserve it or not. Blessings, whether they deserve it or not. And start treating others around you like Father treats you. Because as he said, if you start treating everybody else the way I treat you, <laughs> then you're going to get more of the good treatment. He said, but if you start treating everybody opposite the way I treat you, then you're going to get the same treatment from me, the way you treat others. He said, what mercy you show, I'm going to give you that kind of mercy. You want mercy? My mother used to tell me, she said, forget about money. Put a whole bunch of mercy in the bank. You want to be rich in mercy. You want to be rich in forgiveness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> because God's going to take that and multiply it again unto you. <laughs> you think you don't need mercy and forgiveness? There's something. You listen to me. Something's going on that needs to be corrected. Just is, is, it, a, is it a beautiful thing to consider? And here we find ourselves in the midst of the presence of the Lord and without really any effort on our part, without really even any knowledgeable measurement, as it were, on our part, God is renewing us day by day. So every day we're being strengthened by Him only because we choose to dwell in Him, only because we choose to, to live in Him, to speak the truth in love, to live the truth, to walk this out, to abide, to dwell in Him, to say, Lord, this is what I want. I want what you want. I mean, you tell Father, <laughs> tell Father, Father, I want to be perfect for you. You know what? He wants that too. So you now agreeing with God, it's going to work out. Yeah. Somebody say, you perfect. You think you're perfect? No, but I want to be perfect for him. I think he's perfect and he's in me and I made a master, so that's going to be a good situation for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Somebody said, oh, you telling me you never sin? Well, I don't ever want to sin. And that's the big difference. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, listen, listen. The thought of sin is not temptation. I mean, forgive me. The thought of sin is not sin. It's temptation. Because Jesus was tempted in every way that we're tempted. And, he had, and so for him to be tempted, he had to have the thought of sin. But you know what? It's not sin. But you know what? If I have the thought of it, I still say, Lord, forgive me. Are you listening to me? Yes. Anybody doesn't have the thought of sin. That's, we're in a world where there is the propaganda and the lies of Satan. We live in a world right now. Uh, I was telling a friend of mine this, this the other day. We live in a world right now where women dress in such a way that you had to go into a house of irrepute to see that 100 years ago. Even in burlesque shows, you wouldn't see, forgive me for using such a terrible term here in the house of the Lord, but just to make a point, even in those kinds of things that went on in the world, they didn't dress it like women dress out on the beach. And people are going, and you're just, your culture is taking you into all these different realms. And, and, and it's, getting, it's getting translated from the beach to the sidewalk. I mean, you know, put out both eyes. I mean, what can I do, you know? It's just that, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're going to have to get yourself baptized in the Holy Ghost. You're going to have to learn how to keep yourself in the love of God. You, come on now. Are you listening to me? Yeah. And, 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 you know, and it, and, it, and it goes both ways. I mean, but I've not been running around. And, you know, I haven't seen men running around basically like that. 
And women, you need to get a hold of yourself. You know what I'm saying? You have responsibility. Saying, oh, he's clothesline preaching again. I told you he was just that holiness. person came to me one time with this kind of feeling sorry for me. She said, you know, I used to be in the holiness movement too. <laughs> I wanted to say, when did you backslide? Because there's no such, there's, there, there's no other alternative. There's like a holiness movement, unholiness movement. <laughs> what are you saying to me? Huh? What you meant to be saying as I used to be a legalist. I'm not a legalist. I'm doing this because I want it. <laughs> I'm not doing this because I had to. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm doing this because I'm in love with them. I just want to, you know, you set your heart to learning what Father wants. And it's not, going to be, it's not going to be a bunch of different opinions. People have different opinions because they're preacher made, not God made. They, all they do is just listen to a preacher. The preacher got him, got him up there to the altar. He moved him with all kinds of persuasive, you know, uh, emotional whatevers. Are you listening to me? I'm not saying that that can't work out. But then, ultimately, they listen to everything they believe about God, which is even worse. Everything they believe about God, they just basically heard from Him. They've never been given the assignment to, to search the Word of God themselves, to be responsible themselves, to know what God said, rather than getting the interpretation of men, because you can count on the Holy Ghost to show you what God said. Praise the name of the Lord. And you know, that's another beautiful thing about this whole growth process. See, the things of the Spirit are foolishness to men. You've got to be born of God. And He comes and He, by His own might and power and grace and goodness, draws us. People don't come to Jesus because many, 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 many most of the time, the, as far as I'm concerned, the reason that they don't come to Jesus is because they refuse. They were not, they're not willing. Because I don't believe that the Lord has left anybody out. The grace of God that brings salvation to has appeared to all men. Not some men. Is that right? Yes. You know where the verse of Scripture is? Go ahead. You know where the verse of Scripture is? Just go ahead. Pop out there. Just come on. Just try to work on a word of knowledge. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us to deny something. Does anybody know where it is? You need to get the Word of God in your heart. So it, it, as long as you can, you, you can finish the Scripture for me. As long as the Word of God is in your heart, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. He said, you know, people are telling me all the time, ah, oh, you know, can, you can't, can't, can't live this life. Yeah, you can live this life. Can you just, you know, tell me some reasons why you can't live this life? And they can't. They can only espouse Christian philosophy to me. They can only give to me scripture, Christian ideology. They don't quote the Word of God. No wonder, <laughs> You know, you'd be pretty weak and frail if you didn't eat all week. And people, I, I, I only eat on Sunday mornings. You're going to die. You will die. You will die of malnutrition. I guarantee you, you will, get, you, you're, you will have no ability to stand against disease. People go, that is so many people's lives. Or once a week, one Sunday morning, they get a little spiritual food. And in most churches, it's not hardly any word of God. It's more, you know, what was on the latest news report? What did the, you know, uh, favorite basketball, football team, whatever did. I mean, it's just, it's, you know, it gets a little strange what, what gets communicated from the pulpit. Huh? Well, if you're going to be strong, if you're going to be, if you're going to be fit for the battle... You know, Paul wasn't just given an option when he said, be strong in the strength of the Lord and power of his might. There is a supply. Somebody said, I want to be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. It's a supply. It's for you. It's available to you. All you say is, all you got to do is, here's all you have to do. Say, Lord, I want to be strong in your strength and in the power of your might. And then believe he's going to do it. Right. Believe he's going to do what he said he's going to do, and he's going to be who he said he is. Hallelujah. It's a wonderful thing when you enter in a relationship with the Holy Ghost and you start talking to him. Huh? And you say, Lord, you see that there's this temptation coming at me right here. And I want to understand how to deal with it effectively. And then ultimately, God takes it beyond. See, 
we're still so, many people, many of God's people have not been willing to mature and go on with God. So they're still stuck in that deal of wrestling with their own, with wrestling with strong desires, wrestling with voices of things of the pleasure of this world. When, and when you could have matured and looked and saw that whatever was going on and said, Lord, how can I bring this person to a saving knowledge? Lord, let your anointing flow through me to set them free, to liberate them from the strongholds of Satan. Everything, oh, dynamics of everything changes when you want everybody to be saved. When you want everybody to encounter the presence and the power of God. The whole dynamics change. When you didn't get your hamburger on time. When you ordered it and you're still sitting there. I can't believe it. I didn't say lettuce. I said no lettuce. <laughs> and the poor bird said. Who just has had a whole line of people. She's having a bad day. She's had a whole line of people telling her what she put wrong on the hamburger. And now you come in and chime in. You have no concern for the stress and the pressure she's under making those hamburgers. Are you listening to me? I mean, I would, these things of spiritual growth are very ex extremely practical. And when we don't make it practical, when we don't walk right out of the church building with things that we practice, there's something seriously wrong with what went on in the meeting. I mean, you are going to have to realize that you are not justified because you are a hearer. You are justified because you are a doer of the word of God. You're going to say, Father, okay, I don't know how to do this. I'm a, I'm a child. I'm a baby, but I want to learn how. Strengthen me. Lord, I'm, I know that I don't have the capacity to fully understand <laughs> what it means to be <laughs> strengthened with your strength and your power. Be strong in the strength of the Lord, the power of his might. See that? You know what that is? That is a word that is, a word that is an empowerment statement. Okay, that is not a word of you got to do it, figure it out. Do you hear me? Because if you're going to figure out how to be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might, you're never going to get it. It's an empowerment. He says, be this. It's an empowerment. Like he said, he said, light be and light was. Pretty radical. Well, the, 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 the universe wasn't saying, no, I can't be that. <laughs> the, the universe was saying, no, it's not possible. No, no, that's not the Christian experience. <laughs> I, I put on my Facebook this morning, Christian means, Christian is not the primary word in the New Testament to describe God's people, saints. It's, it's saints instead. And thank you. But at any rate, uh, at any rate, hallelujah, I'm glad people know this. Uh, at any rate, Christian means anointed one. And, and, uh, and so it's used three times in the Bible. The rest is just saints, holy ones. So God has anointed us to be holy ones. And so I get it. I get it. Immediately I get a text from a theologian. Christian, Christianos, uh, you get, you, means to belong to Christ. I said, come on, man. I said, come on. Yes, it does. Just go a little bit deeper, though. Just go, just please, go, don't get stuck in your, your, your antics. Don't get stuck in your semantics. Just go a little deeper. We always want to hold, we want to hold, we don't want to go too far. You belong to Christ. You're not an anointed one. You just belong to him. You're an anointed one that belongs to him. Yeah. Of course, it doesn't take too much knowledge, linguistic knowledge, to understand that that's the truth. The Lord says, be. What are you going to do? Are you going to be? Because being is, is, being is really believing. Because it, it, it is, in the Greek language, as well, as well, really even the English language from which it is derived, to be living, to be living this, to believe it, to believe it. To, the, the believing of it, the practice of it, the being of it, to be it, to be it. Faith it creates the miracle to be it. Are you a new creation? If you're a new creation, how far do you take that? Do you fully embrace that you are a new creation? What created you? Having now begun in the Holy Ghost by this miracle new birth, are you now made perfect by your own human ability? 
Most people would say yes. By practice. So what is more important, orthodoxy or orthopraxy? Orthodoxy, oh, oh yes, amen, praise God. So, so having begun in the spirit, can you describe that to me? Can you describe the ways that it all goes? Can you tell me where the wind comes and from, where it's going, and how it operates, and where it how it decides to blow, which way it's blowing? So is everyone just born in the spirit? And now, having been born of the spirit, having begun in the spirit by this miraculous event of just saying, "Yes, I want that." Hey, how hard was it? Yes, I want that. It's not hard at all. Yes, I'll take that. Huh? Now, and he says, be strong in the strength of the Lord and power of his might. Might. Yes, I'll take that. <laughs> Having begun in the spirit, you're now made perfect by the spirit. Yes, I'll take that. Yes, do that. Yes, I'll have that. Yes, please. I, I accept. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's mine. Is your name written? The, I was in a, walked into a Christian school one day and I said to the, the kids that were there, in another country, I said, do all of you know that your name is written in God's book? It's called the Lamb's Book of Life. And most of them said, God knoweth. Because that's what they're taught. They're taught, nobody can know. I said, you can know right now. You can know right now. You can break the bands. And of course, you know me. I don't care if I don't get invited back. You can break the <laughs> bands of your denominational heresy right now and come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ because this is what he said. But you've got to be willing to accept. You've got to be willing to believe it. You've got to really be willing to say, that's who I am. This is me. I take that. I receive that. I want that. Oh, God, rise up mightily in the midst of me. Where is God? I heard a preacher saying, heaven's a brass. I can't get a prayer through. There seems to be no answer. My response is, so if the heavens were brass, which they're not, why does that, and it, yes, right, heaven's brass is because you live under a curse. We don't live under a curse. That is correct. That's, now that's, that's, but that's Bible. That's not theology. That's Bible, but that's not theology. And so I, theology and the Bible are, Almost universes apart many times. But I want you to hear what I'm, I want you to be, listen very carefully what I'm saying because these gotta be, this has to become a part of your life. And you, just, you need to grab a hold of it, take it, allow it to, to be in existence in your life. How can a preacher full of the Spirit say such a thing? He has to forget who he is. He has to forget that he is the temple of the Holy Ghost, that God dwells in him. Then you know, and to, Get God to hear from heaven. Lord. Lord, spring up a well. Lord, arise and go before us. You know, that's what they did in the midst of their battle. You got a battle, got a problem going on? Put Jesus on it. Look at what they did in the Old Testament. They went and got the Ark of the Covenant. Oh, Lord, arise and go before us and let our enemies be scattered. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, God, rise up and take care of this situation right now. In the name of Jesus, you power of hell, I bind you, you sickness, you disease, you iniquity, you sin, you ungodliness, you doubt, you unbelief, whatever. It's wonderful when you get into a personal relationship with the Lord and you begin to practice the reality of God in you. That Christ Jesus lives and abides and dwells on the inside of you. That God wants to come out of you and be expressed through you like the busting forth of rivers, the converging of great, of great, of great rivers the, where, where the Niagara and the Victoria Falls splash up against each other. Hallelujah. There's lots of life there at the converging of rivers. That's where you'll find me fishing, where rivers converge. I know how to go fish those eddies. Come on, man. We having supper. There's lots of life there. There's lots of force there, huh? There's lots of every good thing there. Yeah, all the beautiful stuff is there. What an empowerment! Talk about being. Be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of His might. It's just being. 
Be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. It's rivers coming out of you. It's expressions, unlimited expressions of God that can only be described as rivers. How does that happen? Because you allow it. Because you just be. Because you say, yes, it's yours. Do it. It's not passive. It's active. It's saying, Lord, I'm yours. You're mine. Do it. Lord, arise through me. Oh, Lord, move through me. Live through me. I'm in you. You're in me. You walk around saying, I'm the apple of his eye. You don't walk around saying, he loves me, he loves me not, he loves me, he loves me not. Because Satan's going to make sure that the only thing that's left at the end is, he loves me not. You don't, you don't go, oh God, oh God, oh God, if you're here, if you're here, speak to me. This is a great one, though. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. <laughs> How? I will make mention of his righteousness. Continually, even thine only. Oh God, you have taught me from my youth. From now on, I will declare all your wondrous works. Because if you do that, you're probably going to open up. My face is set against you. <laughs> uh, because it was the wrong atmosphere. <laughs> you don't have to have any more proofs. It's just a function of doubt and unbelief. Come on now. It's just going ahead and grab a hold of the Word of God. That's why I, I, my continual cry to God's people is get into the Word of God. And don't just read your favorite verse every day. Don't just read a chapter. Don't just read a book. Be systematic. Listen to the whole counsel of God. It's all good. And it's all going to be built one, upon the one, one verse upon another verse. And it's going to explode into a great revelation of who God is and what He's done and, and what He's doing and what's going to take place in the future. You're going to find yourself right in the big middle of it. And you're going to find yourself a living epistle written of God and right of men. I want to be a living epistle. Written of God and read of men. You get to be it. You get to be it. I want to be a new creation. What is it? Old things pass away. Behold, old things are new. Be it. Be it. You get to be it. Wanting to ain't going to ever get it. And you're never going to have it. Oh, if I could only just have faith. He supplied it. He gave it. It's a gift. It's yours. Just start saying, I have faith. He gave it to me. And if you're not sure, just say, Holy Spirit, give me some faith. And then he's going to give it to you right there. Holy Spirit, supply faith. And if, you, and if you'll grow with if what's happened, if you'll give yourself to these things every day, you'll find yourself. Every day, you'll find yourself having an event going on in your life. Maybe at first you can't, maybe at first it, it, it seems to be unnoticeable. Maybe at first you don't really see the impacts of it. Maybe at first there doesn't seem to be a lot of things changing. But you give yourself to believe in those things which God has spoken, which God has said. And you'll find that all that he has declared in his word and all that he has supplied by Christ Jesus is easily and instantaneously accessed. And you can measurably have an impact from it, whether it's faith or love or joy or peace or his goodness or his, or whatever. His healing, his miracles, his signs, his wonders, his dreams, his vision, his accompaniment in our life. God is so good. Hallelujah. So we say, God is so good, praise the Lord. Because that's what hallelujah means, right? God is so good, praise the Lord. God is so good, He's so good to me. 
Now, here's the challenge. When you're not feeling very good. When you feel that things are against you. When you think that things aren't working out for you. And now you start giving other elements, other things in this world, authority over your life. People's opinions of you. Financial situations, circumstances. A disastrous situation that took place in your life. How do you turn away from all of that and begin to say, Jesus, I want you to be the authority over my life. You have all authority. I want everything that I have and everything that I know and everything that I am, I want you to be the author of it. I only want those things which you supply. I give my emotions, my affections, my desires, my thoughts, my wishes, all my hopes, I give them to you right now. Come feel me. Now I'm not dominated by some rejection. Now I'm not dominated by some hurt, some de devastating situation, some, some fearful circumstance. Like I'm going to get evicted because I haven't paid my rent for the past four months, which is a terrible thing. I mean, you're behind in faith. If you, you know what I'm saying? If you're four months behind, I'm just going to try to get a circumstance direct, you know, to create for you. If you're four months behind in rent, you're behind, way behind in faith. But I'm just going to go ahead and create this for you. I'm four months behind the rent and there's no money in the bank. How do you move from that to turn it over to the, to the Lord Jesus so that faith can work and provision can come? Because it will if you give him the authority in your life. If you allow Jesus Christ to be the authority in your life. If you come out from under the yoke of fear, faith begins to work. You can say with me this morning, well, I want that in my life. But you're going to have to give yourself to the maturing in it, to the growing in it, to recognizing that you may, you may not realize at the end of this day, maybe all you would, well, you know, even if you grew older, well, you're going to grow older today. You won't be able to really identify it, you know. You won't be able to really notice it. You, are, you were renewed in your inner being throughout the day by the promise of God, and you may not be able to notice it. Five, ten years from now, you're going to be able to notice it. And when you start getting a little bit older, you start then noticing like on a weekly basis. <laughs> Wait a minute. That seems to be a little bit deeper than it was. <laughs> that wrinkle seems to be just a little bit more established. And I still work that. I rebuke wrinkles. Really, what are you going to believe? Where's your faith going to be? What are you going to believe? Jesus is going to become Lord of all or Lord of some things. Is he going to be, is he going to be, are you going to be a new creation in Christ Jesus in all things or just in some things? Are you going to live in the blessing and the authority of God in all things, or are you just going to live in the blessing and authority of God in some things? I want you to stand with me. It's our great desire to help people lay hold of and, and have in their lives the things that Father's promised, but we just got to get you to start talking different. We want, we, the meditations of your thoughts and of your heart needs to be different. We're going to have to get people, we're going to have to cut, get you to a place where you're going to just begin to declare those things which God has declared over you the way in which he declared them. How many of you know that 
practice does not make perfect. How many of you know that practice does not make perfect? Because you can practice wrong. <laughs> and you can be perfectly wrong. You can perfectly do it wrong. You practice doing it wrong so much, it's perfectly wrong. <laughs> the Lord said, I want you to live by the word. Jesus is the word. He said, I want you to live by me. He said, I want you to live by the word. The word which proceeds out of the mouth of God. It's his word that quickens us, causes us to understand, quickens us, gives us fresh strength and ability, quickens us, makes the things that before were obscure a re living reality. <laughs> huh. It, it, it is a beautiful thing when God's people come to realize that by their own choice they can live under the manifest presence of God and have a response within their life, within their demeanor, within their expression, within their speech. It's all that which belongs to the Holy Ghost. You know, you, did you know you can't fix anybody? Did you know that? Well, then why worry about it? Why be concerned about it? Because reality, the more you try to fix a person and the more you worry about it, the more you throw doubt in their direction. How about taking whatever it is and totally giving it over to the Lord and trusting it to Him and getting all happy that, you know, it's in good hands now. The, the one who can fix it best has got it because I just gave it to Him. I'm not holding it back from them. I'm not keeping it back from them by allowing some other authority to dominate my thinking. Because Father has given me the privilege and the ability to be a co-inheritor, a co-laborer with Him. And now if I do it His way, I'm going to get His results. If I do it a different way, I'm, I've just now abdicated. If I do it a different way, then God described I've abdicated. And do it God's way. Vitolo suti para ne ikishi. Just receive right now from heaven. How about this? How about this? Be strong right now. Be strong right now in the strength of the Lord and power of His might. And what is, what is your response? Okay. How hard is this? Oh, okay. I'll do that. Amen. And then you walk out and somebody says, how are you doing? I'm strong. Strength of the Lord and power of His might. I tell you, I've watched this over and again where people that you ask, how are you doing? And they, they, oh, well, the devil's at me. I, that's terrible. I'm under, I'm under spiritual attack. And, you know, it, it, you find out, wait a minute, you always under a spiritual attack. What on earth is going on and what is happening? I'm not under no spiritual attack like that. Why don't you come on over here where we at? 
They under spiritual attack all the ways because that's why they've given permission to a spiritual attack. Are we under spiritual attack? Are we doing war in the heavenlies? How are you doing it? Oh, we do this dance like this one. You do? Is that how you do it? There's all kinds of ideas out there. The power that is in the name of Jesus. <laughs> the faith that is by him and through him. <laughs> Just to mention of all authority is given to him. All authority is given to Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus, I pray that everything that you've allowed to dominate your life, it doesn't matter where it's at, whether it's sickness, whether, where, whether it's sin, whether it's some form of doubt, some kind of, some kind of attitude, some kind of depression, spiritual, physical, just no matter what it is, in Jesus' name, I want you to take hold of what God has said concerning His only begotten Son and say, this is the way it is. This is how God said it. His word's forever settled in heaven. I give Him all power and authority. Nothing, nothing around my life shall be any different than that which Christ Jesus described. I won't allow it to be. Because I'm on his side, he's with me, and I'm with him. I'm in him, and he's in me. I am his, and he is mine. Now, I'm praying for people that are they're bound up in the spirit. They're bound up. The flow is not there. You're bound up. It just, it's expressed in doubt and unbelief. It's expressed in just not being able to take hold of these things in God. You, you do good for an hour, and just praise Him and thank Him, and then for the other 23 hours, it's like, two days out of the week, it's good, then, Four days, it's five days, it's bad. It's up and down. God's Word will give you wisdom. Wisdom is insight to understand how things work and how they function, what they're like now, what they're going to be like in the future. God's Word produces wisdom. If you begin to take a hold of His Word and live by His Word, then you'll be able to see exactly how things really are going down, how they're supposed to be, how they work, how it's going to be in the future. And you won't, you won't receive anything else, any other lies that are being told. Father, I ask you in your mercy to bring a spiritual breakthrough here to many people that are standing in this room right now that do not understand how to put this into practice. They believe wrong things and don't even know it. They've, lay, they've allowed wrong things and are unaware. They're conflicted inside and have no idea. It is, but it isn't. You are, but you aren't. I am, but I'm not. It's true, but I'm uncertain. It's real, but I don't have it. Those kinds of things. God demands a breakthrough for you. And it's a supernatural supply that will come to you as real, as miraculous as the new birth. But you've got to want it. You've got to recognize the things that have been going on in your life and say, no more. It's done. No more. Am I going to be like a person in the middle of a storm in the ocean tossed back and forth between waves? I'm not going to live up and down no more. I'm going to just take off and begin to soar in the heavenly realm and just stay there from here on out. I know, I know of great people in faith that just said, they would simply say, I, I, don't, I don't see anything that's going on unless it's in heaven. That's all I see. All I see is what's going on in heaven. 
Well, how about this? You need to open up your eyes and be able to deal with it. I don't see nothing except for what's going on in heaven. I don't know what you're talking about. And then somebody said, well, you've got a real problem. No, you've got the problem. Because I want to minister out of heaven, talk out of heaven, live in heaven. So therefore, heaven's all that means is any, 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 of any meaning and value to me. You're just caught up in a circumstance and a, and a storm of this world. And you're calling it real. And I'm saying it's false. I'm saying that God, Christ Jesus, is in charge. And this is the way he said and described it to be. And I'm not going to have it any other way. And then it's to let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm rich. Ha. Huh. Let the sick say I'm healed. Hallelujah. Let the one who has no child say that my seed shall be as the stars of the heaven, as the sand upon the seashore. Ha. Huh. Hallelujah. Ha ha ha. day a pot of salt and angi berate. Mangaya nagoshi. Mangaya brujangalea. Mangalea siya tikia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bruce Ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody said, well, it's just been this way for so long, you know, and I, you know, I've done everything I know to do. Obviously, you don't know what to do. You've done everything that you know to do, but it, it didn't work because you was doing it wrong. And start try to get people to believe that. See how it goes over. You do it God's way. You do it Father's way. It's going to work every time. It's 100% re reproducible. It's 100% accurate. You'll have all things that, that, uh, that pertain to life and godliness. You will have all provision provided for you. Right out of the realms of His riches and glory. You will, you will increase more and more. Hallelujah. Your faith will grow more and more. You will increase with the increase of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Your inward man will be renewed day by day. Every day you're getting stronger in other words. Uh, you go from glory to glory. You look in the mirror. All you see is Jesus. All you see is the new covenant and all that he's provided. <laughs> you go from strength to strength. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> if I could just, I just want to pluck everybody up from the place that you're at and set you right down in heaven, plant you in a realm where you can't get unplanted no more. I unplant you in a heavenly realm where your roots go deep into the water of the Spirit and you can't ever be moved. And if somebody trans tried to transplant you, you'd die. The psalmist said, they go from strength to strength. Every one of them who appear before the Lord God in Zion or in his presence. Woo, all I got to do is show up. The word of God will work effectually in you that believe. The word of God will work mightily in you. The Holy Ghost is groaning in you. God the Father is interceding for you. Jesus at the right hand praying. <laughs> Got to come out from underneath your doubt. Got to come out from underneath your unbelief. Got to come out from underneath your own rule. Got to come out from underneath those things that you've given authority to in your life that are nothing more than demonic strongholds of men and devils. I'm going to get after this thing here. I'm going to break this thing in Jesus' name. The path of the righteous is a shining light that continues to shine brighter and brighter with every passing day, even unto that perfect day. Are we in it? Are we in it? Are you talk to you tell me about somebody who's accomplished something in in this world and you tell me about somebody who's accomplished something in athletics or whatever else and you're going to hear I'm in it to win it I'm sold out you, I'm all in Oh let God's people be of such of such 
noble behavior. Oh, let God's people rise up. Oh, let God's people be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. Oh, let God's people say it's done, call it finished. Oh, let God's people say that Jesus Christ is absolute Lord. He's sovereign God in this world and in the world to come. And quit giving other things power over your life, especially Satan. I'd rather you give finances power over your life than the devil, especially sin. Sin shall have no more authority over you. And yet I watch as people give sin authority all the time. Uh, and they empower sin. Oh, we got to do it more or less. And, oh, I can't believe he says we can live without it. I say in Jesus' name, stop those lying spirits. Stop those lying thoughts. Stop that position of, of abdication before you even began. Sin shall have no more dominion over you. I mean, I'm just like feeling, been feeling for the past couple of meetings. Just I'm going to minister on Romans chapter 6. And break it down for people. I like taking Romans chapter 6, 7, and 8 and breaking it down for people. Just look at the word. Read the word. You tell me. Is there any other way to see it? You know, and let's leave it there. Let it be wide open. Let people, everybody. Huh? I don't mind questions. I think questions bring people to a, a more full understanding. Amen. Hallelujah. Even people who ask questions wrong, I'll get them into a more full understanding in Jesus' name. Why? Because I've got a wisdom that no man can resist. Hallelujah. Because I'm letting the Holy Ghost do the talking. Somebody said to me, he said, oh, you really think you're something special, don't you? I absolutely do. Christ Jesus in me, Holy Ghost is so in me. <laughs> God the Father is in me, I'm special. Hallelujah. <laughs> I've been bought with a price. I'm not my own. I'm glorifying God in my body and my spirit. And the words that I'm speaking are not my own, but the Father's. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> I pray in Jesus' name. Everybody in this place will look into the mirror and see something beautiful. <laughs> Unblemished. Special. <laughs> I'm praying from this day forward, you'll look in the mirror and see Christ. See Christ Jesus. See Christ in you. And I pray in the name of Jesus. You'll say, I no longer live. So many people are so fearful to say such a thing. They, they draw back in fear and unbelief. They like all the rest of the witnesses. There are very few Caleb to Joshua that will say, we are more than able. We are more than able. They shall be, our, they shall be bread to us. People always want another day to come. Another day will not come. The day has come for you to say, now, I no longer live. It's Jesus Christ who lives. Amen. 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 Say amen. amen. Say glory. Hallelujah. Christ the, Lord Christ the Lord has arisen in me. Let Christ arise. Let Jesus live. Let Christ arise. The fullness of his glory. Let these rivers of life these expressions of God, expressions of God be, everything be everything that's seen in you and me. me. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I'm, so I'm so glad that Jesus set me free. Set me free. Oh, I'm so, I'm so glad that Jesus set me free. I'm so glad, I'm so glad that, Jesus that Jesus set me free. Singing glory. Singing glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus set me free. Jesus set me free. 
Spirit, soul, and body. I belong to him. Spirit, soul, and body. I am now in him. Spirit, soul, and body. The Holy Ghost has hold on me. I'm so glad that Jesus set me free. I want you to know that whatever lie you believe, whatever lie, whatever shade of lie that you believe will hold you in a prison. It will actually damn you. Scripture says they should believe a lie and be damned. Should know the truth. However, should know the truth. And the truth will set you free. It calls you to live in a realm of liberty. The freedoms of God. The life of God. Hallelujah. I want you to begin to deal with the things that God said in His Word and you made it different. I'm go home, man. I'm telling you, I'm on. I'm. I'm. I'm telling you, I, I got it. The Lord put a word in my mouth this morning. I'm gonna just start. I'm gonna start blowing the trumpet. The Lord put a word in my. I, I, I didn't minister to it because it, it really was for more, far more than for the people that are in here. It's another. It's another forum. It's another venue for another group of people. But so many people have taken. And live in their life in shades of reality. Inference, opinion, anecdotal information, and facts. Rarely come to truth. So many of God's people will take a little teeny bit of truth and then put a whole bunch of inference and opinion on it. It's, it's time to make a transition. It's time to make a transition. It is time. It is time to make a transition. Every person in here, it's time for you to make a transition. Time. It's time to behold yourself in the perfect in the mirror in the word of perfect law of liberty. Just behold yourself in the mirror, the perfect law of liberty. It's time to make a transition. And say everything about my life from this day forward is going, to be is going to be the expression of those things that God said. If God said it, I believe it, and I'm going to do it, and I'm going to say that's mine. Because it's going to begin there. It's just so simple. It's really simple. That you belong to Jesus. That you're a new creation. That, you that old things have passed away. That you are His. That you are in God. That He is in you. That Christ Jesus has come to live and, divine, uh, live and dwell on the inside of you. That you are the temple of the living God. That you literally are the dwelling place of the Holy Ghost. And you make everything else that you believe fit into that doctrine. You make everything that you believe fit into the doctrine that you've been born of the Spirit, that you've been born of God, that you've received the miracle of the new birth, that Jesus Christ lives in you, that He is the ruler and the authority over your life. You make every doctrine fit within the framework of that reality. And everything will begin to change. Amen. 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 Well, do this. I want you to get an offering ready for the Lord. And the reason being is because that's what Father desires. This is what he said. He said, listen, you bring your tithes and your offerings into the house. Jesus, somebody said Jesus never preached on tithe. He said, oh, he did too. He did too. And I'll happy to happy, be happy to show you that he did. But, the, but, but also the reality of it is, is Father wants to work a miracle of provision for you. Father has made a way for provision for everything and with every area of his provision there is a simple act of obedience and cooperation a simple act of doing and believing today when you when you come to worship the lord with your tithes and offerings we want you to come with a faith we want you to come we want you to we want it to be holy see we want it to be obedience we want you to find yourself and see yourself cooperating with all the father has promised knowing that he's providing. There is a great provision. Somebody said, oh, if I give him the offering, I've lost part of my budget. No, you haven't. You've gained more than you thought you had. 
You gain more than you thought you had. Because there's two ways to look at it. You can look at it from the perspective of men, and, and which is always going to produce some form of doubt and unbelief because it's the perspective of men. By virtue that it's perspective of men, it's doubt and unbelief. By virtue that it's perspective of God, it's faith. Amen. So just come worship the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Find a bunch of people around you. Hug them. Tell them that you love them. Bless them in Jesus' name. Come back tonight. Come back tonight. Come back. Come back. Come back tonight. Sit in the presence of the Lord. Go from strength to strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If there's anybody who wants prayer for anything, you come. I'm happy to pray with you. If there's anybody in this place that you've not been walking and surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ and you need to get liberated. Uh, you, you, you never turn your life over to the Lord. I see that most people, and there's there that most people in this place have. You've given your life to Jesus. But this, I can also discern that some people in this place aren't walking right with God either. <laughs> and you get serious with God, He's already serious with you. It's true. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, Father wants to touch you. Hallelujah. He wants to fill you up. He wants to bless you. He wants to strengthen you. You've got to believe it. You know, we could tell you all day long, if you call upon the name of the Lord, you'll be saved. But until you believe it and, and call it yours, you ain't, you're not going to be. You can't blame that on God. Well, I didn't see a hand come down out of heaven and touch me. No, the Word came down out of heaven and touched you. The Word came down out of heaven and produced faith in the, those who will hear. Huh. The Word comes down out of heaven and produces faith in those who will hear. The Word works a miracle. The Word and the Spirit works a miracle. God will work a miracle in you. God will work a miracle in you. Yeah, you've got to choose who's in charge, God or you. Whose Word are you going to believe, yours or His? What, whose thoughts are you going to allow to possess your mind and thinking, yours or His? Because too many people have exalted them own, their own self above God. What they think, what they believe, what they feel, what they know. It's about time to come under the rule. Now, some of that's for here, and some of that's for people watching on the web and the YouTube, but, you know, I, I, every, it, it's helpful for everybody. It's helpful for everybody. Just believe today. Take a hold of that which God has said. Take a hold of what God has said. Hallelujah. Take a hold of what God has said. And let it be yours right now. There needs to be no other proof. There needs no, to be no other testimony than the proof and testimony that's already been given. Now you just, you, just, you just begin to praise Him and you begin to respond to Him and you just tell Him He's in charge. And you begin to let Him be Lord and Master. You begin to exalt His Word in such a way that nothing can get in the way or interfere. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for everybody who's standing up here right now who just so desirous to get things right in their spirit or in their body, whatever the case may be, whatever physical thing has been trying to master them or spiritual things been trying to mess with them or thoughts that have been trying to harass them when all the time, Lord, you wanted your thoughts to comfort us. We've let wrong thoughts discomfort us so father we thank you we thank you for the miracle of the mind of christ thank you for the miracle of the mind of the spirit 
I thank you for the miracle, oh God, of your, your word speaking to us. We thank you for the miracle, Holy Spirit, of you constantly bringing into our remembrance this wonderful word. Now, Lord Jesus, I thank you for working a miracle right now. Work the miracle in the body. Work the miracle in the spirit. Work the miracle in the thinking. Just lift your hands towards heaven. God would work a miracle for you. The, the, the circumstance of the thing of the past won't be bigger than the reality of his presence. It's terrible to make things of the past bigger than the, than the reality of what exists right here in the present. The past is a terrible prison to live in. God said it's yours, so make it yours right now. God said these things are yours, so make them yours now. Father said these things are yours, so make them yours right now. Father said they're yours, so make them yours right now. Father said they're yours, so make them yours right now. See, it's not just believing, it's receiving. As many as believe and would receive to them, he gave power, the authority to be sons. It isn't about God doing it, he's done it. It's about you receiving it. I don't care what dimension it is. I, I've been in many situations where I've seen the authority of God already released into a person and they've not received it. I was with, the, I was, I, li I like to tell this story because I was with the person. God allowed me to go and, and, and minister in, in, a, in, a, in a place where just everybody who's ever been raised up by God and this generation has ministered. And there was a woman there who had a brain tumor and she asked me to pray for her and I was getting ready to pray for her. I said, I see the healing anointing all over you. What's, what's up? She said, yeah, everybody's prayed for me. She went down the list. Reinar Bunky, Benny Hinn, Carlos Senecone. She named everybody. Just about everybody. Her only problem is she never received what God gave her. Just receive what God has given you. Just receive what God Father has given you. It's yours. You know how receiving... What God gave, has given you begins. You know, how, you know when somebody gives you something, you know what the proper response is? Exactly. You know what a synonym for praise is? You know what a synonym for praise is? Thanks. Thank you. So I said, we just had praise and worship. Well, not really. I didn't hear many thank yous. And I didn't see much manifestation of the Holy Ghost who's the only one who knows how to do worship. You and I don't know how to do worship. God, the Holy Ghost, knows how to do worship. That's why Father gave us the Holy Ghost, so that we could worship. Hallelujah. Amen. I wish, I, 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 my desire is to see people reevaluate what they believe. And you're, you're, it's, it's mine. Somebody said, I had a financial need. Well, you can come and say, Father, I thank you that you supply all of my financial needs right now according to your riches and glory. And then go, wow, it's done. Because as you're doing it, as you're worshiping, it's more than just a, it's more than just a mental ascent. It is an interaction with the Holy Ghost where faith comes and you feel and understand and know this is what God has done. I'm gonna ask, I, I like to ask people, did a change come when you were saved? If not, you didn't get saved. If it changed, maybe you, just got, maybe you just got inducted into religion. Do you know there's not a single person on the planet, including Satan himself, that can convince me that I was inducted into religion. I know I was born of God. I know the Spirit of God is on the inside of me. I know my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I know I'm kept by the power of God. Now, if I can convince you that you've not really been saved, then, uh, then you haven't been. You haven't been. It is, many people were, and just, they just came into a religious service. They got inducted into religion. And, and they, what they're, they're preacher made. They're not God made. They're preacher made, not God made. Preacher said, okay, you're saved. You're saved. You said the little words, you're saved. Nonsense. 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 It's a miracle of faith that comes to a sincere and true heart. Not, I'm going to tell you right now. You listen to me. You, you listen to me. Because it's important for me to say this to everybody sitting in here. Salvation is a miracle of faith. It's a miracle of faith. You don't get saved doubting it. Can I say that again? You understand what I just said? 
you, you don't get saved, God doesn't work a miracle over top of your unbelief. You're just as lost as you were before you came to church. Huh? If you don't know a change taking place, we want, to, we want you to get a change. What do you need? You know what changes that? You know how to get out of doubt and unbelief? Do you know how to get out of doubt and unbelief? Take a guess. Faith. That's how you get out of doubt and unbelief. Faith. Pretty simple, isn't it? Does anything seem not rational about that or those don't connect? You understand? Does that make all sense? It makes sense? I think that makes all good sense, doesn't it? Where does faith come from? That's correct, from the Word, from the Word of God. Where else does faith come from? That is correct. All good answers, all correct answers. Faith is supplied to us by the Holy Ghost. It's the fruit of the Spirit. And wherever Christ Jesus is working and the Word is working, the Holy Ghost is working and, and vice versa. So what is it that you need? No, you just need to stay in the Word of God. You stay in the Word. Just stay in the Word. Just believe what God's Word says. Quit believing all the stuff that's, that, that men are saying and that you're saying. You, you, you're just exalting your opinions above what God says in His Word. Now, who's going to change that? You, answer, you got 100% here. So, so, I mean, now it's just, a, it's just a matter of doing it. Why not just do it? What, what, do you, what do you think the trick is? <laughs> Father, I ask you to work a miracle for Nicole. <laughs> so all of these things that she knows becomes a living reality to her. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The salvation is a living reality to you. That those things which God has declared, that His presence, that the Holy Ghost, that His glory, all the good things that belong to heaven is a living reality to you. From this day forward, in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So you just receive. Just receive. Just receive right now. See, fear has torment. People live in fear and suspicion. Fear. What's the guy's name? Jim Jones or whatever his name was. People live in fear. Fear, fear, fear. Scary. Something bad's going to happen. That's a, that's, a realm of, that's a realm of the demonic. It's a realm of darkness. Is what that is. And the beautiful thing of His perfect love, this love that the Father has supplied for us. <laughs> Cast out all that stuff. Amen. It, it's a wonderful thing when you come to realize that you kept by the power of God. I'm kept. Hallelujah. Ha. <laughs> it's a wonderful thing when you know that He leads you, guides you, and keeps you. The Holy Ghost comes to lead you and guides you into all truth. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for the supply of the Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for the anointing. East Pine. Limambra Dei. Limambra Dei. Limambra Dei. Pratisei. Limambra Dei. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
What is it that you want? I break the power of this thing off of you now in Jesus' name. I speak life and deliverance to your family. Now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. By the power that is in that name. Satan, you leave the property of God alone. I destroy you. I destroy your work right now. I render everything that you've said and done and all your lies ineffective. In the name of Jesus. I speak holiness and purity and life into you, into your family. In Jesus' name. Now in the name of the living God, you, become, you come under the authority of the Holy Ghost now. You come under the authority of Christ Jesus and watch him work out everything according to his own good pleasure. You watch him do it now. You come under the authority of his joy. You come under the authority of his peace right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. What? Right now, in Jesus' name, be touched by the power of God. Truth is, just, truth is, truth is simple. Just stay on the truth, okay? By his stripes, by his wounds, you were healed. Doesn't say by his wounds, you might be healed. You're going to be healed in the future. God didn't say, lay hands on the sick, and it might be that they recover. He didn't say any of that. He said, lay your hands on the sick and they shall recover. By his stripe, you were healed. Hallelujah. What, what's up? What do you need? Okay, it's numb. Okay, Lord, what's your name? Jane. Father, I thank you for complete, total deliverance and transformation in Jane's life. I thank you for the healing of her hand right now. Jane, look at me. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in the name of the living God, you listen to me. Father, we thank you for a complete and total transformation. Father, thank you for a complete and total deliverance from every sickness and every sin and every power of the enemy. But everything about Jane's life is an expression of your glory and of your goodness. And in this day for Jesus' name, live in him. Live by him. I command the numbness to go out of your hand. Your nerves to work properly in your fingers. What happened to your hand? What happened to it? How did it become numb? You're not sure? When did it become numb? Long time ago. Uh, uh, okay. Oh Lord Jesus, we thank you for the healing right now. <laughs> right now, in the name of the living God, out of your belly, out of your innermost being, begins to flow rivers of living water. Right now, in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name, all the former things pass away. Say, I send all the former things away. Say, I, I'm sending everything of the past away. Say this. Say, I, I'm sending, I send everything of the past away. I'm accepting everything that the life of Jesus has to offer. Say, old things are passed away. Every old thing is gone. Say everything right now is new in Jesus' name. Amen. What's up?
Peter's over there. There now. Just a minute, friends. Touch. Touch. Be filled up. 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 What's up? What's wrong with you? Be healed. Right now in Jesus. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. What's up? Not to worry, the Lord's got it. Not to worry. What is it that you need? Well, that's good. That's good. You're in agreement with Father, so you're, so you're in a good, good spot. Cheers. So what's up over here? What's happening? Huh? Huh? Yeah, just feel that right there. Just take all that right there. Not a problem. Not a problem. That's easy. Yeah, no worries. That's not difficult at all. What you, what's up? What do you need? Hmm? Hmm? Oh. Yeah. how that happens. Just comfortable with his approval of you. Now, I command so sickness go off of you now. Listen, I hate the flu. And I, I've, been, I've been anointed by God to destroy flu. To eradicate flu. So in Jesus' name, it's gone. What's happening? What's up with you? Where is that going to come from? Well, when are you going to have it? Okay, good. Just want to make sure. To make sure that we're, this is a, a program we're entering into. Look, salvation isn't a program that we sign up for. The hope to ultimately pass and receive certification of in the future. It's ours. That was a really good catching method, man.
Tiktaki and a kati keksi. Ha 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 Father, we thank you so much for those who are coming into the kingdom and are just being radically taken over by your presence. Father, I pray that they don't, not a one of them, loses the first love, loses this excitement, this flow, but it increases continually. In Jesus' name, well, we love all of you guys. Go get something to eat, come back. Those of you, that, you don't have to. If you're caught away, I mean, just caught away in the glory, don't feel like you need to go anywhere.